Dear friends, welcome to the show Talk with your doc. I am Dr. Prashant Jani and with us is today Dr. Gabriel Mapeso. Dr. Mapeso is a surgeon at Thunder Bay Regional Health Science Center in Thunder Bay, Ontario and today we are going to talk about obesity. Obesity is a significant problem uh, all over the world and the incidence is increasing day by day and there are many diseases which are associated with the obesity and Dr. Mapeso is going to guide us about how important is the problem of obesity in our society, how to prevent it and how to treat it. Thank you Dr. Mapeso for coming to the show again, we are really happy to have you. Thank you very much for inviting me over. Thank you. As, as a surgeon you might be seeing many patients uh, who are obese and it might be very difficult or challenging to perform the surgeries on these patients. Please share us your experience on that. Uh, yes, they can be uh, very difficult indeed uh, because you have to consider when we operate especially on the abdomen, we have the way we do our surgeries, we, can, we have to see or visualize the organs and if somebody is quite obese, then the exposure is compromised or very difficult. So it is an issue and besides that obviously, there is also risk of heart disease, and lung problem, breathing problems, and also, also the fact that during recovery is compromised because of their obesity, they have difficulty breathing, they're high risk for uh, blood clots as well. And uh, so it is a problem, obesity, and unfortunately, it's a growing epidemic and more and more patients are quite obese. And it is a challenge as a surgeon to operate on patients that are obese. So, uh, how can one know one is obese? What is the difference between obesity and overweight? Um, that, that's a very good question. Uh, first of all, I'd also like to share you a personal experience too. There are some people you ask them how much they weigh and they don't even know their weight. So, that in itself is a problem because some people deny uh, the problem or they do not accept that they have uh, a problem. But in any event, uh, so, uh, BMI is the indicator or the index of how obese you are. BMI you said, uh, basal metabolic index. index. Yes, and for the audience, if you really want to know, you can look it up in the internet. There's a lot of BMI calculators, so it's based on the weight and it's based on your height. Uh, for me, I'm 5'5", five five, and my weight belongs in the middle of healthy. If I was to weigh 160, I will be overweight. If I was to weigh 1, uh, 190, I'll be obese, and if I weigh over 190 pounds, then, or uh, uh, 250 pounds, I'll be considered morbidly obese. So it all depends on your height. So a six-foot person would have to be like over 300 pounds to be morbidly obese. So in my height, I have to be 290 to be morbidly obese. So it all depends on your height. Uh, so you have to really look at the uh, different... Uh, uh, BMI chart on the internet and there's quite a, f a lot of them and just calculate. You can enter either standard or metric. Okay. Now, um, what is the main cause of obes obesity in our society? And there's a lot of factors and why it is so. First of all is our diet and weight is basically calories in versus using the calories. So, uh, <clears throat> for people to understand that how much you take in, you have to use it up. If it is over the amount of calories that you don't need, then it will be stored as fat. So diet is definitely, uh, it has a lot of causes and we have poor dietary habits and it is a price for progress because food is easier to get now. Uh, our society is more productive in producing food. So there is abundance in food. It wasn't long ago when people would be told to finish your plate because it is very difficult to get the food. You work hard for your food, you plant your food, uh, you grow them, you harvest them, and you have to work with it. Now, it's very easy. All we have to do is just pick up the phone or dial the phone and we have food. The food that we have right now, if we go to a meal, it'll probably take months to prepare that one or grow it, maybe even a year or so, but Unfortunately, because of progress, we have it at the tip very easily. So easily available food and people eat more. And, and then we eat more. A good example is uh, a muffin, 
A muffin is, has about roughly about 400 to 500 calories. And we, and some people as an adult, would only need 1,500 to 2,000 calories. So that means four muffins is enough for you for the whole day, whole day. or even three muffins. And we know very well we mm -hmm. eat more than that. Okay. So it's just a question of eating more. And uh, we are eating the wrong type of food too because uh, we, have a, uh, we call it uh, food that have very high glycemic index or very high calories mm -hmm. will be converted to fat. So people have to understand if you don't burn the calories, then the calories will turn to fat. Right. So if you eat more and the body doesn't need it, it'll be turned to fat. So uh, average uh, <coughs> man needs about 1,500 calories per day. Yeah, 1,500 to 2,000. 2,000 calories. Depends on your uh, height. And, and women would need like 1,200 to 1,600 calories per yeah. day. And the other thing that I have to mention, which is very important, corollary to the diet is, again, it has something, the price you have to pay for progress is we are working or physically less active. Yes. And so we have a sedentary life. I'm guilty of that too. I have a car, I have a vehicle, so I don't walk as much. I try to walk as much in the hospital. But in general, we are all becoming sedentary. Yes. We have less physical activity and it is uh, the other thing that people have to understand it's very hard to burn calories like to burn one muffin mm. for me i have to walk like over an hour wow so i have to burn to burn 400 calories i have to work more than an hour now so that means it's not easy so people say i, ha I can't exercise no you can lose weight if you just don't eat that much. Yeah, control the diet. Control the diet, right. <coughs> you can. But however, it's also nice to be physically fit. There are people who are definitely overweight, but they're physically fit. Uh, but it, that is not the way to go because you're just fit, you're gonna be overweight. Now, uh, is there any <coughs> genetic factor involved? Like if parents are obese, the child will be obese? Yes, uh, it's a both combination, it's acquired and also has some genetic predisposition. So in general, if both parents are generally obese, then the child would have a tendency to be obese. Now, whether that's genetic plus the eating habits, so it carries on to the kid as well, unfortunately. So it's not uncommon to have families who are all obese. Obese, yeah. Um, so it's a combination, combination of both. And there's also medical conditions that uh, predispose you to be overweight, flu retention, or like um, low metabolism, like hypothyroidism. So there are uncertain drugs too. There are certain drugs that can also cause obesity. Um, but in general, it's our lifestyle. Lifestyle it, is the yeah. main issue. Uh, and yeah. our, it's a global phenomenon. And it's not only related to North America, even, uh, even uh, developing countries who have adopted Western life, unfortunately, and uh, they have better economic uh, growth, then they will generally become more obese. Okay. And the numbers that are quoted is about 30 to 40 percent of the population are overweight or wow. overweight. That's, so a, that's, big number. that's, that's a, big a big number. That's a big number. number. That has yeah. a jump. A significant increase over the several decades, maybe 22 decades ago, yeah. uh, that would probably be about half of that. We'll take a short break and we'll <coughs> continue our discussion after the break. Okay. Please stay back for the next part. Welcome back to the show, Talk With Your Doc. And uh, today, Dr. Gabriel Mopeso is guiding us about the obesity. Dr. Mopeso, you were mentioning about uh, the diet and the lack of exercise uh, being the cause of obesity as well as sometimes some genetic factors and some associated diseases can also lead to obesity. Now, what particular type of diet one should um, keep in mind which causes overweight or obesity? Um, the, uh, we are supposed to eat a balanced diet. Uh, we are supposed to eat a certain portion of fat, proteins and carbohydrates. But in general, the diet that we eat has more energy <coughs> in carbohydrates and fat. Fat is still very important, uh, but in general, we eat more carbohydrates. So I think people have to always keep in mind uh, how much calories they're eating, carbohydrates, and how much carbs. Because everything right now that we eat has so many sweets, desserts, um, advertised processed food has sugar, a lot of carb, even some vegetable package that are processed, they would add sugar uh, to it. So you just have to keep an eye on the caloric intake. Right. Now, do you think the soft drinks like uh, Coke and Pepsi and all the juices, uh, they add to the obesity? Definitely. Uh, the uh, one of the culprit is uh, fructose, 
sugar, soft drinks. Just remember, we never had soft drinks before now. It's almost, you know, this is the, I, we call the age of persuasion. So a lot of people are influenced about uh, commercialization and uh, s fancy foods, uh, soft drinks, um, sweets, this, some of those things. So it is very tempting to eat because they are delicious, no doubt about it. People develop a sweet tooth too. And kids are very susceptible to developing sweet tooth and they like sweets which is really detrimental to them as well. Now, uh, as you were mentioning, uh, many diseases are associated with obesity like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease and many other diseases. So, um, what is the best way uh, one can prevent all these diseases if somebody is obese? Uh, well, first of all is uh, you have to acknowledge whether you are overweight or not. So, you have to check your BMI, you have to check the chart. And uh, you have to, it, it's more like a, uh, a collective view of what you're doing, activity, caloric intake. Um, go to your family physician too, check your cholesterol, check your blood pressure, uh, check your heart, uh, which is the reason why you have a, a regular checkup and have a serious talk with your physician uh, if your diet is correct or not because you will have routine blood works and you may have some de vitamin deficiencies too. Uh, that could be a problem because uh, when you're on a diet, uh, you, you restrict some of the food that you eat. You have to be careful you don't also go malnourished too. Okay. So, uh, in children now, the childhood obesity is also a growing problem in the society. And what do you think is the cause for the childhood obesity? It's almost the same as for adults too. I think it's uh, dietary and sedentary. And kids these days, unfortunately, um, even you see it everywhere. They're more glued to the TV or, or their um, uh, gadgets and toys and uh, iPhone, iPads, and the games that they video games that they play. And it, instead of going outside, it wasn't long ago we were, including me, I remember when we were kids, we were playing out in the rain if it rained, but this was back in a warmer uh, country and we would go out and play, but now I don't even see that in uh, my, uh, my kids as well or my so young So this, uh, this obese children will develop diabetes at a younger age probably? Yeah, they or do. They will develop the heart disease at a younger age? They do, and the epidemic of obesity is also a concern because it's approaching almost like the adults, like thir around 30% in uh, children now in the U.S. We all have uh, U.S. data, but it translate also, you can extrapolate that to Canada because we have a similar lifestyle. Uh, we also have around that much percentage of obesity in kids. I just remembered we had a picture. Uh, my wife had uh, uh, get in touch with her friends in the Philippines and they had a uh, reunion and they sent a picture of their elementary school and I look at it, what was very striking was that not a single child was obese. Only, I could only see one child slightly obese, including the teachers. But if you take a school photo now, 30 or 40 percent of them will be overweight. That's a huge risk factor for all the associated yeah, diseases associated in young disease, children. Uh, cholesterol problems, heart disease, um, you also have lung issues, joint issues. You're overweight, your joint's going to suffer, hip, hip arthritis, uh, gallstones as well, mm -hmm. cancer, cancer of the uterus, cancer of the bowel, cancer of the breast. There's a lot of associated uh, problems. So if problems. you just control the weight right from the childhood, all these other diseases can be avoided. Yes, definitely. Even uh, during adult life, <coughs> if you have some of these problems, when you lose weight, uh, your blood pressure will go down. And it's not uncommon. People who lose weight, they stop taking their blood pressure pills. They stop taking their heart pills and their cholesterol goes down. And all the diabetes also can and go And the diabetes away. can improve too. Yeah, so yeah. it's very important to recognize the problem yeah. and then treat it with diet and exercise. Yeah. Now, um, uh, there were um, some reports that some drugs are useful in the obesity. What is your experience with it? Uh, there are drugs uh, that are uh, for it, but they, they're sort of, they have some risk for it and um, they always have to be under medical uh, uh, medical advice because they can have some associated side effects. I don't want to name names, but you can look it up in the internet. There are several drugs, but one of them is because they, they sort of control the appetite center in the brain. And if you can do that, then it will control your diet. But there are some bad side effects with it, so you have to be careful when you're on that one. It is also a drug for transitioning, uh, for losing weight 
uh, before you have bariatric surgery as well. Mm. So there are some surgical intervention if you're overweight and if you really want to decrease your caloric intake, then uh, there is such a thing as uh, bariatric surgery but as the well. best would be to diet and exercise and uh, regular lifestyle. Oh yeah, definitely. Right. It's better than having surgery uh, for sure. Surgery is usually limited to surgery. You select the patients that you do surgery. You don't do surgery on everybody. Right, right. Now tell us something about liposuction. Um, <clears throat> liposuction is more like, a, I, I call it a sculpturing. Uh, it's like sucking, <laughs> suck, I'm sorry for the word, but you, you, lipo, you suck the fat in certain areas that you don't like, sort of. And uh, so it's more like a cosmetic surgery. Uh, it does take some fat away. Uh, it sculptures your body, mm -hmm. so it's like a plastic surgery. It makes your figure look better uh, to you, and you don't like some certain bulge. And there are complications with it, but you have to have a good chat with your uh, surgeon and your plastic surgeon because there, the expectations, there are certain expectations and limitations to it. There are also complications with it, but it is an option, but it is a local thing. Like you can't, you can liposuction the whole body. Whole body yeah. So it's only a certain portion. So it's like a sculpturing. Sculpturing. Yeah, that's Thank you, Dr. Mope. So we'll take a short break and continue with the last part of the discussion. Right. Please stay back for the last part. Thank you. Welcome back to the show, talk with your doc, Dr. Mope. So today is guiding us about obesity, what are the causes and what are the treatment options available. Dr. Mope, so you were mentioning about liposuction. So tell me, who is a candidate for liposuction? Uh, it depends on where you go. Okay. So it depends on the surgeon, depends on your expectation and there is some financial component to it. If you're in the States, then uh, you can certainly sculpture your body with liposuction depending on where the fat is located. And so there are, uh, you have to have a chat with your surgeon if it is a reasonable option for you. Do we do it here in Thunder Bay? We do it here in Thunder Bay. Our plastic surgeons does them, yes. Yeah. Is it covered by OHIP or? And that's a good question. There are certain, if it's associated with some condition on the skin and, and uh, skin diseases because of the dermatitis associated, it, it, may, it may be covered, it might be, but it's not, I can guarantee you, it's not 100%. Not all liposuction is covered. So uh, now there is a new surgery, uh, bariatric surgery, where, yeah. um, where uh, they remove a part of stomach or a bowel. Mm -hmm. uh, and does it replace the liposuction? Uh, well, uh, the main goal of bariatric surgery is, um, the, the history of it is that you, it's called a bypass because our small bowel absorbs the food that we eat as nutrients. It's called a bypass because what they do is they reroute the food that you eat to a segment of the bowel to bypass a significant portion. So therefore, you will not absorb as much nutrients. Mm -hmm. And that's the, whole, that's the whole premise of a gastric bypass. Usually, nothing is taken out, but it is bypassed. So what they do is they trim the stomach in, in, uh, in uh, uh, no, uh, regular man's language, uh, you trim the stomach and the stomach becomes a smaller part and then they, they uh, cut a piece of the bowel to hook up to, this, to the uh, small stomach and the food that you eat is bypassed to hook up much, much lower mm. in the small bowel so that the, there is a portion that it will not be exposed to food so the nutrients then is not, or the calories, so to speak, is not absorbed. Okay. Does it um, reduce the stomach capacity as well when you... Yeah, usually in bariatric uh, surgery, what they do is they make the stomach uh, smaller. So they, tr they literally trim the stomach, but the, the rest of the stomach is still in the belly, but it will not be exposed anymore to fo food. So there's a small portion of stomach that they use as a stomach still, and then they hook up the small bowel there and then they bypass a segment. Now, uh, after doing this surgery, is there any complication associated with it? Oh, definitely. There are complications. Because it is a surgery, there are complications like risk of pain, infection, bleeding, scars, swelling, hernias, and there are uh, scar tissue, uh, bowel obstruction, because sometimes there's adhesions or, or the bowel rotates or kinks. There are, there are certainly complications of the surgery unique to it. And even people sometimes develop gallstones from it. 
And because it's like a malnutrition type of surgery, you decrease the calories and intake and you have to be monitored because you might lose some vitamins and minerals too. So uh, not everybody should go for the bariatric surgery no, no, not because everybody, there are complications associated yeah, with it. Not everybody is a candidate for surgery. What they do is you go to a bariatric clinic, which we have in yes, Thunder Bay, yes. and they will assess you medically, um, psychologically, if you're fit for it. And they will try other, make sure to rule out other medical conditions and to see if you are definitely a surgical candidate. And not all people who go to the bariatric clinic are surgical candidates because they might find something else that would contribute to yes. the obesity that can be handled medically. Right. So it is not for everyone, but they are selected by the bariatric clinic. And yes. Then and the surgeons then has the final say whether they are acceptable for bariatric surgery. And also to include, because they may have comorbid problems too. Mm -hmm. They have to check your heart. If you're a surgical candidate, they have to check your lungs, if your lungs can withstand it. If you, have, if you have very poor lungs or heart, even if you're a candidate, then you can't have a surgery because it can be a After doing this bariatric surgery, yeah. how long it takes for a patient to lose the weight? Oh, they will lose weight almost immediately. And usually they have to, uh, you have to make sure that there is, uh, the patient is also uh, a buy-in from the patient to make sure that they follow the dietary requirements mm -hmm. because uh, there's usually a drop. The typical pattern is there's a drop and there have a significant drop and there's a little bit of rebound. And that rebound uh, will determine if he will rebound going back up or rebound and then taper off. That's usually okay. what happens. So uh, after bariatric surgery, if one loses the weight, he has to change the lifestyle. Yes, otherwise he can the gain the weight yeah. again, right? Yeah. We had, uh, <clears throat> I remember a case during a residency where uh, this guy was like 500 pounds. And so this is in, in many years ago, one of the ways to avoid the patient was a psychiatric patient. And believe it or not, people might find this cruel, but one of the treatment before was to tie your teeth, oh. the wire, to wire your teeth so that you won't open and no, f you can't eat. Shit. So that was one option. However, this guy would maintain his weight because mm. he was still smart enough. He would put a straw on the side and suck as much soft drinks and fluids and food. Oh. So he still has. Yeah. Still has so um, there are complications associated with obesity. So yes. best way to treat it is uh, uh, maintain the diet, lifestyle. The lifestyle and yeah. uh, it's a, it is a combination of a lot of things. Yes. Right, right. Thank you, Dr. Mopeso, for coming and guide to the show and guiding us about the obesity. Really appreciate it. Oh, you're kindly welcome. Do you have Marinda. any last co comments to add? Uh, no, I think uh, people, my suggestion is to always be aware what you eat, how much you eat, and be aware of the calories, uh, how much it is, and the balanced diet. So you need protein, you need fats, and you need carbohydrate, not too much of it. Yes, and the portion of the size uh, and the portion. portion of the diet. Yeah, we usually double size or triple size. That's a problem. Yeah, and oh, one other thing is, uh, some people think that fasting is bad for the body. I think sometimes we need a little bit of fasting yes. because uh, what also contributes, as I didn't mention, is culturally we have developed a, we develop of having breakfast, snacks, lunch, snacks, supper, midnight snacks. So the body doesn't have time to say, I'm going to use your fat. So if you fast a little bit, at a certain point in time, you may have to research this one, then the body will burn your fat because your, your body will say, well, you're not giving me food, so I'm going to use your fat. Fat is stored energy. If there's no food, the body will use the energy. But it's a certain time, usually about 12 to 16 hours. If you always eat in between, then the body will never, never use, use your fat because the fat is stored energy. Just like the polar bears, the foxes, the animals, they use their fat when there's no food and then they, they go skinnier. Yes. So when there's abundance of food, you eat and they have this fat. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Mopeso. It was really enlightening to have you uh, here at the show. Thank, Thank you so much. You're kindly welcome. Thank you for the sh your participation. Thank you.